Hi all, welcome to part 2, Combinational Circuits. See, uh, what we saw in the first part of the video lecture is uh, what is so called a combinational circuit and we saw an equivalent logic circuit called sequential circuit and we made a comparison between these two. So this is what happened in the last, uh, the first part of the video lecture on combinational circuits. Now we are going to see this combinational circuit concept in detail. So let's um, start our discussion with the general block diagram of combinational circuit. This is something we already seen in the previous part. See, it uh, what is happening is some n inputs will be applied to the given combinational circuit, right? So, uh, nothing but a logic circuit uh, without any feedback path and all. Hope you remember, right? But when it comes to sequential circuit uh, there will be feedback path memory element those things are there so such things are not there when it comes to combination circuit so that's also so some set of inputs are applied and inside this combination circuit you can see some uh, complex circuit made out of uh, different gates and all and finally you will get some m, uh, m outputs and you know using this a n input uh, it is possible to have some 2 power n um, input uh, combinations let me call them as input instances right this many instances are possible say all zeros to all one that many possibilities are there like some zero to uh, two power n minus one right so this many instances are possible and each of them when you apply this m output will be uh, something out of them right so if i am calling these inputs like a1 a2 uh, a3 etc a and you can see that this first output let me denote by x1 say the first output is a function of this a1 a2 etc a n that means you can express each output uh, uh, by, by a function uh, by a boolean function of all the input variables similarly this is another um, output line which is uh, uh, represented by another boolean function of this a1 a2 etc a n and finally this is our x m and that is again f of a 1 a 2 etc a n so that about it so something like this and we will see more examples so by that it will be uh, more and more clear to you now how to analyze a given uh, combinational circuits the concept is like uh, some circuit is given to you right some logic circuit the logic diagram something like that so let's take an example say here you can see a circuit which is made out of uh, different gates right you can s see this uh, three variable and gate three variable or gate right in, in, uh, inverter maybe some other gates also now how to analyze this kind of a circuit or how to come up with the boolean function corresponding to this so you can follow the steps what you can do is you can label all gate outputs that are function of the input variable with some arbitrary symbol uh, but with uh, meaningful name something like that so determine the boolean function for each of the gate output so wha what uh, what is the first step so for each of the gate uh, represent the output using some uh, meaningful um, intermediate variables actually we have uh, inputs like abc so this is actually a uh, so I, I have a circuit right so uh, what is happening here so what kind of a combination circuit is it so this circuit is taking how many inputs a b c you can see only three inputs right so the different combinations of this a b c is happening um so it's the inside circuit is taking only these three input you can see that right now finally it is giving you the output that is f1 and f2 so something like that so this is your combination circuit in this example now what is the logic inside the circuit and that logic is shown here so it's a complex logic right now you have to find out what is this f1 and what is this f2 so that is your task so what you can do is um, so directly moving on to f1 you can do that but it is somewhat uh, tricky right? so what you do is follow a step by step procedure for each of the gate uh, find out what is the output of this uh, by representing some variable like this so you can i'm representing the output of this first first gate uh, first uh, and gate right let me use first and gate or uh, no need of labeling okay by some um, for uh, say this or gate i'm representing by t1 and gate i'm representing by t2 so you can represent in any ways this is something i taken from the textbook so whatever it is what is this temporary output uh, to something like that this is a dot b dot c right so similarly what what is this t1 you know it is a or b or c something like that that you can find out that is the first step right so similarly here also here it is a smaller thing so you if you want you can use some temporary otherwise you can write it directly like a b a c b c and the output of this uh, or gate you are representing by your f2 so f2 is nothing but um, a b plus a c plus b c 
because all these three inputs are ORD, right? Uh, we are performing the OR operation of all these things. Now we have uh, a negation uh, of this F2. So F2 dash I am getting, right? So this F2 dash is nothing but what is your F2? AB plus AC plus BC, the whole dash, something like that. Now here I am t having a AND gate and the output of this AND gate I am representing by T3. So what is this T3? Uh, let me tell you this T3 is actually what? Uh, this is AND operation of this A plus B plus C and this one, right? So T3, I am denoting that T3 here. Okay, so, uh, so space is uh, lagging there. So A plus B plus C is one of the input of this T3 and the second input is f1 f2 dash so that is a b plus a c plus b c the whole dash something like that yeah similarly and fi um, finally what you are getting so for this f1 is nothing but one of the input is a b c and or operation is happening so or the second input is your t3 or t3 so what you are obtaining here you can substitute here okay so now you can simplify this further if you want mm, so this is something like uh, a plus B plus C into uh, this is by applying De Morgan's law you will get it like a, mm, yeah mm, a B bar yeah that way you can proceed you can uh, apply De Morgan's at this point so it will be like a, you can do this simplification in any ways this will be like a, a dash plus B dash into so this uh, plus become dot and this dot become plus and the variables become it's a complemented form i hope you remember here it will be mm, a dash plus c dash into b dash plus c dash so like that now you can do further simplification maybe i'm um, showing them in the next slide so see this so this is our uh, hope you remember this is my f2 right so f2 i got uh, directly as a b plus a c plus uh, b c fine now T1 is uh, my A plus B plus C, T2 is A, B, C, hope you remember. Then uh, T3 is like, a, mm, this is my T3, T3 is actually, T3 is equal to what? Uh, F2 dash dot T1, like that. And those two things we are taking. And uh, finally F1 is T3 or this T3 coming from this point. So this is your t2 so t2 or t3 is my uh, f1 so that f1 i am substituting and i think we uh, taken th this into this and this up to this uh, we simplified right uh, so this uh, let's come back this particular line this is what we obtained last a b c so this a b c plus t3 and what is what was my t3 a plus b plus c into a plus b plus c into by d morgan a dash plus b dash c a dash plus b dash into a dash plus b dash a dash plus c dash and b dash plus c dash right these three terms so till that we obtained now let's simplify further uh, what we can do the first two things you know uh, by distributivity this a dash is uh, can be taken as common then b dash uh, c dash so it, it will be something like that a dash plus b dash into c dash so when you distribute this plus over dot you will get this now the uh, opposite thing of distributivity is applied right and similarly here mm, this b dash into a that is a b dash similarly c dash into a that is a c dash right b dash into a a b dash then c dash into a a c dash right so with the a that uh, pro term is multiplied now with the uh, when you are mu multiplying this b dash plus c dash with b you will get b dash into b as a variable it's in into complement that is zero right hope you remember so that will vanish then um, b into c dash this term right Now finally this um, um, this whole thing into C will give you B dash into C and C into C dash again will be 0, right? Finally this. Now again you can uh, distribute further. Uh, this is like uh, and uh, here at this point A dash into A that will be uh, 0. So the whole thing will be 0. Again A dash into A 
this the, when you multiply this a dash with this one and this one uh, both of the terms vanishes because a into a dash that will be zero now when you try this a dash with the b c dash you will get a, a dash b c dash the first term similarly a dash with the b dash c you will get a dash b dash c dash okay right now uh, when you multiply this uh, this one what you are getting is a into b dash into b dash is b dash b dash into c dash a into b dash into uh, c dash this one right this is already counted right so yeah that is coming here and similarly you can just uh, do multiplication uh, that's all uh, finally the remaining terms are also so, so th this is something this uh, this into this is giving you this similarly this b dash c dash into this also giving you this right and c dash into uh, c, uh, this is like uh, b into b dash so this term will vanish right and similarly c into c dash this term will also vanish something like that you are getting it and finally this uh, a b c so all together you are getting the simplified expression and this is you know the simplification procedure that you studied at the beginning uh, the, the by using the basic laws of boolean algebra you simplified that expression so this is one way fine uh, to analyze a given expression given logic diagram systematically write down all the um, temporary uh, variable is equal to what what and finally uh, expand and summarize something like this right so that about it now you can do it in a uh, better way like this here the simplification is something uh, maybe tricky and uh, each one will be getting a different uh, answer also maybe at different levels of simplification that also possible but to get get the solution in a very systematic way you can depend a second method so where you are going to depend on the truth table and uh, hope, hope uh, all of you are comfortable with the truth, truth table right now you know when we have n input variable there will be 2 power n uh, possible input to combination right so the uh, truth table will be containing 2 power n um, rows right 0 to 2 power n minus 1 so you uh, fill all the input to combination and label the output of the selected gate just like before and obtain the truth table for the output of each gate right those gates and proceed to obtain the final output so here this is our um, diagram right so first you take so what are all the inputs a b c are the input so a b c three inputs are there we have uh, three inputs a b c and you know the, uh, the seven different combinations of this 0 0 1 0 1 0 etc 1 1 1 right now what you can do is uh, you can uh, find out what is this t1 right and you know t1 is actually a or b or c you know 0 or 0 or 0 uh, 0 any one of the input is 1 or is going to give you the 1 uh, remaining things will be 1 and similarly what is your d2 like that you mm, proceed systematically all those things will be 0 and finally somewhere you will get this 1 right similarly then wha what is f2 what is f2 dash uh, what is uh, f1 like that systematically proceed so this is one way so you are go going to come up with the um, true table so what is f2 what is f2 dash what is t1 what is t2 what is t3 and finally what is your f1 so like that now from the true table you know how to um, come up with the uh, canonical expression so that is one thing you can dep depend so if i am asking you what is your f2 um, f2 is sigma so you know these things uh, corresponds to min term 0 min term 1 min term 2 min term 3 min term 4 min term 5 min term 6 min term 7 so uh, f2 corresponds to this one min term 3 is there right so min term 3 is there and these many min terms are also the sigma of 3 5 6 and 7 now what is your f1 f1 corresponds to min term f1 corresponds to min term 2 1 is there min term 2 is there then min term 4 is there right and min term 7 is there so f2 corresponds to summation of min term 1 2 4 and 7 so whatever it is so this is a canonical representation now if you want the simplified expression what you can do is you can use a uh, three variable k map right just using k map you will get the minimum sop expression so that is unique also unique de uh, that depends you know de uh, how many uh, that prime implic implicant and essential prime implicant you are having you may get may or may not get the minimal sop but unique in the sense the total number of variables or the literals all together that value will be 
सेम बट द सेम मिनिमल एस ओ पी से मिनिमल एक्सप्रेशन यू मे गेट इन मोर दैन वन वेज बट द बट दैट इज मिनिमल दैट इज फॉर श्योर ओके सो दैट अबाउट इट सो दो थिंग्स वी ऑलरेडी सीन दैट यू कैन ट्राई हियर यू कैन कम अप विद के मैप एंड यू कैन सी वॉट इज अ सिंप्लीफाइड बोल इन एक्सप्रेशन दैट करस्पॉन्ड्स टू दिस पर्टिकुलर लॉजिक डायग्राम सो वॉट वी सीन इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर इज प्योरली अनलाइसिंग ए गिवन लॉजिक सर्क्यूट राइट and uh, coming up with the so one way is just directly write the temporary and keep on simplifying something like this this is something tedious right so on uh, another alternate uh, way i can't say it is better because if the number of variables is 3 this is fine if it is something 5 uh, or 6 variables are involved this is like uh, that many entries you are to keep uh, it's de definitely this root table method is going to be tedious and that time the simplification may be easier for you so both techniques are there you can go for any one of the technique for analyzing the given logic circuit so that is uh, the topic of discussion now in the next uh, part we will see uh, the actual design of a given uh, combinational circuit uh, given its specification right yeah thanks for watching